Hello everyone, and welcome once again to the AIO Education Channel. Today we are going to explore one of the most interesting and important chapters from class Art Science, Particulate Nature of Matter. Have you ever wondered what everything around us is made of? Whether it's air, water, wood, metal, or stone, all of it is matter. In this chapter, we will learn what matter is, how it behaves, and why it exists in three different states, solid, liquid, and gas. So, let's begin our journey into the microscopic world of matter. Everything that has mass and occupies space is called matter. In simple words, anything that takes up space and has weight is matter. The air we breathe, the water we drink, the books we read, the clothes we wear, and even our own body, all are made up of matter. But the question is, what exactly is matter made of? Scientists discovered that every substance, no matter how big or small, is made up of extremely tiny particles called constituent particles. These particles are so small that we cannot see them even with a normal microscope. Let's take a simple example. If we take a piece of chalk and keep breaking it into smaller and smaller pieces, it will finally become a fine chalk powder. But even then, its properties remain the same. It is still chalk. This means only the size of the particles changed, not the substance itself. Such changes are called physical changes, because only the physical form changes, not the chemical nature. Now imagine if we keep grinding it further, a time will come when it can't be divided anymore. Those smallest possible particles are what make up the chalk. This simple activity tells us that every material around us is made of tiny particles. Similarly, when we dissolve sugar in water, it seems to disappear, but when we taste the water, it becomes sweet. That means the sugar hasn't vanished. Instead, its particles have spread throughout the water, occupying the spaces between the water particles. These spaces are called interparticle spaces. This proves that particles of matter have space between them, and that these particles can move into the spaces of other particles. Thousands of years ago, Indian philosopher Acharya Kanad had already proposed this idea. He said that every substance is made up of small, indivisible, and eternal particles called parmanu. These parmanu are what we today call atoms. He believed that these atoms cannot be destroyed. They can only combine or separate to form different kinds of matter. Isn't it amazing that our ancient scientists had already imagined the atomic theory long before modern science proved it? Now, Let's understand the behavior of these particles in different states of matter, solids, liquids, and gases. In solids, the particles are very closely packed together in an orderly arrangement. The interparticle space is very small, and the force of attraction between the particles is extremely strong. Because of this, solids have a definite shape and a fixed volume. The particles cannot move freely but can only vibrate about their fixed positions. When we heat a solid, the vibration of its particles increases. After some time, when the energy becomes high enough to overcome the strong forces of attraction, the solid begins to change into a liquid. This process is called melting, and the temperature at which this happens is called the melting point. For example, ice melts at 0 degrees Celsius, while iron melts at 1538 degrees Celsius. The higher the interparticle attraction, the higher the melting point. Now let's talk about liquids. Liquids do not have a fixed shape but they have a definite volume. The particles in liquids are not as tightly packed as in solids. They are arranged loosely and can move around each other freely. This is why liquids can flow and take the shape of the container they are poured into. The interparticle attraction in liquids is moderate, not as strong as in solids, but not as weak as in gases. When a liquid is heated, its particles move faster, and at a certain temperature, they gain enough energy to completely break free from each other and change into gas. This process is called boiling, and the temperature at which it happens is called the boiling point. Thus, when we supply heat to a liquid, its kinetic energy increases, and the force of attraction between its particles decreases. Moving on to gases, gases have neither a fixed shape nor a fixed volume. The particles in gases are very far apart and the interparticle attraction is almost negligible. The particles move randomly and at very high speeds in all directions. Because of this continuous motion, gases can spread or diffuse easily and fill the entire space of the container they are kept in. For example, when we light an incense stick in one corner of a room, its fragrance spreads throughout the entire room within minutes. This happens because the gas particles of air are in constant motion and mix with the fragrant particles of the incense. 
This process is known as diffusion. Now let's understand compressibility. If we fill a syringe with air, close its opening, and press the plunger, the air inside gets compressed, its volume decreases. This means that there is a lot of empty space between gas particles, which can be reduced by applying pressure. But if we try to do the SAM with water, its volume remains almost the SAM because liquids are nearly incompressible. Solids are even less compressible because their particles are packed tightly. This shows that gases have the maximum interparticle spacing, liquids have moderate spacing, and solids have the least spacing. Another interesting property of matter is solubility. When we dissolve substances like sugar or salt in water, the water level rises slightly at first, but after complete dissolution, it slightly drops. This happens because the particles of sugar or salt fit into the interparticle spaces of water. However, if we add sand to water, it doesn't dissolve because the sand particles are too large and there's no space for them to fit into the water's structure. Thus, the solubility of a substance depends on the arrangement and nature of its particles. The motion of particles can also be observed in the diffusion of colored substances. For example, when we add a few crystals of potassium permanganate to water, initially only the nearby region becomes pink, but after some time, the entire water turns uniformly pink. This shows that the particles of both water and potassium permanganate are constantly moving. If we use hot water, the color spreads even faster because the higher temperature increases the kinetic energy of the particles. This proves that particles of matter are in continuous motion, and their motion increases with the rise in temperature. A simple real-life example of particle interaction is seen when we wash greasy clothes using soap. The soap molecules have two ends, one end attaches to oil, while the other end dissolves in water. In this way, Soap breaks the oil into smaller droplets that get washed away with water. This is a perfect demonstration of how molecular forces work at the microscopic level. Let's now summarize the three states of matter with a quick comparison. In solids, particles are tightly packed, interparticle spacing is very small, and the force of attraction is the strongest. Solids have a definite shape and volume, and their particles only vibrate about their fixed positions. Liquids have moderate spacing, moderate attraction, definite volume, but no fixed shape. They flow and take the shape of the container. Gases have the largest spacing, negligible attraction, and neither definite shape nor volume. They can be easily compressed and fill any available space. When we heat a substance, the thermal energy of its particles increases, causing them to move faster. As a result, the interparticle attraction becomes weaker. Thus, with an increase in temperature, solids change into liquids, and liquids into gases. On cooling, the reverse happens, gases condense into liquids, and liquids freeze into solids. The energy of particles increases from solid to liquid to gas. Therefore, the state of matter depends on the balance between the kinetic energy of its particles and the force of attraction between them. From all of this, we can conclude that matter is not continuous but particulate in nature. Every substance, no matter how large, is made up of countless tiny particles. These particles are always in motion, have spaces between them, and attract each other with varying strength. The difference in these three properties, interparticle space, interparticle force, and motion, gives rise to the three states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. In solids, the particles are very close and strongly bound. In liquids, they are loosely bound and can flow. And in gases, they are far apart and move freely. This idea forms the foundation of modern science, that everything in our universe, from the smallest grain of sand to the largest mountain, is made up of innumerable tiny particles in constant motion. So, my dear students, this was the complete concept of particulate nature of matter. I hope you now understand how matter behaves and what makes each state unique. From the melting of ice to the boiling of water, from the fragrance of perfume spreading in the air to the dissolving of sugar in tea, every phenomenon around us is proof of the particulate nature of matter. Thank you so much for watching this video till the end. I hope you understood every part of this chapter clearly. If you enjoyed this explanation, don't forget to like the video and share your feedback in the comments below. Tell us what other chapters you'd like to learn in upcoming videos. 
And if you are new to our channel, do subscribe to AIO Education so that you never miss our latest educational videos. Thank you, and see you again in the next video with another amazing and easy explanation, only on AIO Education.